begin settling into the body, just letting go of the week, letting go of today. You can place one hand or both hand to your chest and just begin feeling your hands pressing against each other and really bring your attention, drop your attention from being in the head, let your attention come down to the chest. So see if you can begin getting familiar with the sensations in your chest, maybe feeling your palms pressing against your chest, feeling the temperature of your palms. You might notice the texture of your shirt. You might even feel your heart beating. So just checking in, how's the mind? Maybe it's very noisy right now. It's really hard for you to focus or to find comfort sitting here with your eyes closed. So that's okay. Just notice those thoughts and even emotions. Just notice them as like passing clouds, clouds in the background. So you see them, you feel them, you hear them but you don't necessarily have to follow them. So just keep landing your attention in your chest, feeling your palms there, feeling the temperature. Now begin noticing your breath. As you're breathing in, your chest is expanding, expanding. You might notice the little pause between your inhales and your exhales. And then as you're breathing out, just letting your breath flow naturally, let go of any controlling. There's no need to try. And then as you're breathing out, your rib cage is contracting, contracting, contracting. And then the next breath comes in. So just begin getting comfortable observing this flowing breath. And maybe you feel some emotions already coming up as we pay attention like this. So we're not trying to push away any thoughts or any feelings. We're not trying to only keep and try to create the happy thoughts. But we're more like being a, a container being receptive, allowing whatever thoughts, whatever emotions to come and go without picking and choosing, without judging, just simply sitting here and observing. We're going to bring to mind the loved one, someone that you care about. It could be a person or an animal, maybe a pet, a close family member, this person or this animal, they don't have to necessarily be alive. Um, I'm going to practice right now with my dog. He's no longer with us. His, his name, his name's Tofu. Um, so he's my loved one right now. So with your loved one in mind, just imagine them sitting in front of you smiling. Maybe you start to feel some shifts happen in your heart. So maybe you lean in if it's the tenderness that you're feeling, or if it's kind of numb, you don't feel much, that's okay too. Just notice that. So with our loved one sitting in front of you, really start to feel their loving presence. Maybe you feel like there's more space in your heart. So with them in mind, is there something you want to say to them? Or is there something you want to hear them say to you? Maybe you want to wish them well. Maybe you want to hear that they're wishing you well.
So you can either use these phrases that I'm going to share with you, or you can create your own phrases. So we can direct to our loved one. May you be loved. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be free. So you can repeat it silently. You can repeat it fast. You can repeat it slow. Just tune it to your breath and just let it flow. Or maybe you need to send yourself some love and kindness right now. So you can direct the phrases towards yourself. So it's, may I be loved, may I be safe, may I be happy, may I be free. Or maybe you do both. So it's, may you be loved, may you be safe, may you be happy, may you be free. Now it's your turn. May I be loved, may I be safe, may I be happy, may I be free. And you can go back and forth. If the mind has drifted off into thoughts, you've wandered away from this practice, just notice and come back to the heart and just come back to the phrases with your loved one in mind. So as we move through the yoga practice, see if you can have your attention here in your heart. See if you can let this be the center of your being. So as we go through the poses, maybe when the sensations become tough, maybe you feel a bit bored, the mind would start to wonder after two minutes, three minutes being still in the yoga pose. So whenever you notice that the mind's drifted off, just notice where the mind's gone off to and choose to just bring your attention back to your heart space, back to love. So maybe even bringing to mind your loved one, training yourself to feel at home, to feel cared for and to feel loved, have that to be your baseline. Wiggle the fingers, you can extend out the legs, bring any natural movements into the body, and you can blink open the eyes. All right. So yeah, that's a, that's a loving kindness practice. I'm sure a lot of you who's been practicing with me, uh, that's one of, I, I mostly teach mindfulness and loving kindness these days. Um, so that's a very powerful practice um, to cultivate compassion because it's like we don't really normally learn about compassion. It's not like in our everyday routines do we train ourselves to be more compassionate. If anything, most of our daily routines and social media use is training us to do the opposite, to be kind of self-centered, maybe, you know, sometimes be really caught up in our own stuff. So that's a very powerful way, um, even throughout the day, just whisper to yourself, like, may I be loved? Like, may I be joyful today? Like, may I be free? Like, may I be, you know, spontaneous? Um, it's a very powerful way to open your heart. Okay, so we're going to begin today in a butterfly pose. So if you have props, I always encourage you to sit on pillows, um, put, put any pillows under any floating limbs. Uh, let's go this way. So butterfly pose bringing the soles of your feet together. So you can play with the distance, either bringing your heels close to your body. This will be a deeper inner groan stretch. However, it does make you compromise your lower, uh, your hip bendability. Or if your legs are further out, this is more like back of your hamstrings and you can actually, it's easier for you to fold forward. So find your Goldilocks position. And you can begin creeping yourself, creeping, creeping down. And then once you've found 
once you start noticing a little bit of sensation, um, that's your Goldilocks position. Um, my friend, uh, he's, she's a yoga teacher too. She says, never go past eight out of 10 stretch. Um, so yeah, even for me, eight out of 10 is a little bit too much. So as long as you feel some sensation, this is it. Because we're gonna hold between three to five minutes in these poses. So as you hold for time, your body will uh, slowly get deeper into the stretch. Okay, so this one, yeah, let's start with a three minute little stretch. So in this pose, really let your head completely drop to the earth. Like really check in, are you keeping your head up? A lot of times we have a little bit of neck activation. So sometimes I find like nodding your head gently, bobbing it up and down. To be honest, I quite like this movement. Sometimes as I'm in this pose, I do a lot of neck, neck rolling. Uh, but I find kind of bobbing your head a little, a couple of times really persuades the neck to relax. So then maybe eventually you can wind down to stillness and you notice there's more relaxation in the back of your, back of your neck and the back of your head. We actually have a lot of muscles the back of our skull, the base of our skull, where it connects with the neck. A lot of times it's the tension in the back of the neck that causes a lot of like headaches. So the name of the game is to relax in the body because a lot of times when we're experiencing stretch sometimes discomfort we kind of seize up so really just be mindful in your practice like constantly scanning your body uh, but quite often if you scan around your forehead your jaw your tongue those are areas where anxiety tension can creep up uh, the front of your throat the back of the neck, the shoulders, chest, lower belly. So um, glutes, for me, 100%. My upper glutes, <laughs> I, 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 I jokingly call myself a tight ass. And it's because when I get a bit worried and anxious, when I'm kind of in my head and I'm overthinking, I always have, I activate my upper glutes. It's like I'm always kind of clenching my bum. So really just get to notice where in your body do you hold tension? So whenever you can either relax the mind, the body relaxes, or if you relax the body consciously, the mind will relax too. And always, if you can relax and stretch out your breath, um, quite quickly, you'll find more peace and calmness and presence in the body and in the mind. Okay, so coming out of the poses is just as important and I encourage you to be just as mindful. So pressing into your hands, slowly press yourself up. Imagine your spine, one vertebra, one stack at a time. I'm being extra mindful because usually when I instruct, I'm not as mindful of my body and I, I always fly out of this pose even though I'm telling everyone to go slowly. Okay, so once you made your, made your, made your way up, you can lean, lean into the back of your hands. Ah. Lean into the back of your hands and we'll do some windshield wipers. So just swing your knees one side then the other side. So this is option A. This is door number one. If you want a more active, energetic reset, uh, fingers pointing forward, you can press into your feet, into your hands, into a reverse tabletop. If you have no neck issues, drop your head back. And lastly, you can do the same thing, but with your legs extended into a slide. 
So the same pose, but stretch out your legs and press into your hands and your feet into a slide, a reverse slide. Actually, no, that's just a, that's just a regular slide. <laughs> so we'll be doing a series of forward folds. So take as long as you need to, to reset in between, because the sensations likely will get more and more intense as we go into the next forward fold. All right. So from there, you might want to rearrange yourself um, to face the long side of your mat. We're gonna move into a straddle pose now. So just widen your legs. It doesn't have to be as far as you can go. Uh, I like to go on this side of the mat so I can put my, I can put my ankles or my heels on the mat. Um, Cause it's, yeah, whenever you can protect your bony joints, I encourage you to do so. Okay. So from here, we're going to turn our bodies to face the right leg. So while you're facing your right leg, just take a moment to almost like kind of see if you can almost sit a little bit taller even kind of engage your core a little bit to kind of almost stretch out of the hips. So from here, from this lifted position, now see if you can imagine starting the tilt from your hips as you are folding yourself forward towards the right leg. And then finally, walk your hands a little bit further if you need it, and then land into a straddle, a forward fold straddle. Once again, maybe you need to nod your head a couple of times to really get the neck to relax. So if you notice sensations, if it's ever too much in your hamstrings or behind the knees, uh, just bring a slight bend, just bend your knees slightly. If anything, um, see if you can always try to keep a little micro bend in the knees because um, overstretching your hamstrings is uh, not yeah, not ideal. It takes a long time to recover for overstretching your hamstrings. Another option, if it's um, if it's ever too much in your hamstrings, you can always bend um, bend the left leg and tuck the sole of the left foot into the right inner leg. Uh, but if you're enjoying, if you're enjoying the straddle pose with both legs extended, just continue, continue breathing. So the mind is pretty powerful and you might've heard, um, you might've heard the saying, um, where attention goes, energy will flow. So if you want to enhance uh, your yoga practice, you can always use breath visualization to um, promote like energy flow. So as we're in this pose, just notice where in the body that you feel most of the stretch. So for me, it's kind of my neck and my left hip and also my right hamstring. So just notice where you feel the most stretch and every time you're breathing in, just imagine you're breathing in all the way down to the part in your body that you're feeling the stretch. So it's almost like you're breathing in new blood, new energy, more space. And then as you're breathing out, you can imagine you're breathing out from that area and you're breathing out and letting go of tension, letting go of tightness, letting go of any kind of held toxins in those deeper connective tissues. And it's, it's also a very powerful way to almost train your attention and get you to become more familiar with your breath. So you can use this breath, a breathing technique as a meditation and also as a way to enhance energy flow. So always just checking in with your body. 
there should be always like a constant conversation between your body, between your mind and your body, your breath and your body. So maybe the body sometimes wants you, it's opening up a bit. It wants you to go a bit deeper. Or maybe it's happy where it's at, or it's become stretched for a little bit too much for a little bit too long, and it wants you to back up. So let your mind, uh, well, no, let your body be the guide. Because a lot of times our mind, our ego, wants us to, you know, look like this way. We want to push ourselves. We want to go all the way in all the time. So yoga is also mind training and kind of dissolving and less lessening the, the power of the ego as well. So let's press into the hands. Slowly, one vertebra at a time, make your way up. All right, so we're just going to go to the other side. We'll have some time after folding on this side to do some countering. So now turn your upper body to the left leg. Sit up a little bit taller out of the hips briefly. And then start folding at your hips. Fold, fold, fold. Once you can't feel like you can fold anymore at the hips, now kind of walk your walk your upper body and let your upper body, your spine to round. And let your head drop. So one side of the body is likely different than the other side. Um, I know when I first started practicing yoga, I was like, I got to be balanced. It's got to be symmetrical, both sides. I don't want to be imbalanced. Um, but as I, you know, practice longer, I'm kinder with my body and I'm learning to just meet my body where it's at. I realized that for instance, my right hip, it's tighter than my left hip. Um, my right shoulder is tighter than my left shoulder. So stretches that involves those joints, uh, it's gonna look different from my right side and my left side. So as opposed to doing, like trying so hard to get to a certain pose, to look a certain way, we're kind of shifting from doing to being. It's so just being where we're at right now being with the subtle sensations, being in the body, being with the body as we're here. And being patient, being patient as the body expands and stretches out becomes healthier. At, at any point, if you need to back off, you are the captain of your own ship. <laughs> That's pretty funny. It's like a it's like a yoga teacher joke. Um, but especially in yin yoga, sometimes you'll get people in the classroom, the studio, like give you like daggers because it's been like four minutes, five minutes into the pose and they give you dagger eyes. But in reality, they could have backed off whenever they wanted to. And I am not like a tyrant. I don't make you stay in these poses like there's no marks. <laughs> um, so if you need to, you back off. <laughs> You're responsible because I, I can't feel into your body right now. I don't know how sensational this might be feeling. Uh, my friend, uh, my yoga teacher friend, she says that um, your poses just feel some sensation. It does not have to be sensational. Like it shouldn't, you shouldn't be like border, like borderline screaming in pain or wanted to like jump out of your skin. That's uh, beyond eight out of 10. Okay. So pressing into your hands slowly. I know you probably want to shoot up really slowly, one vertebra at a time. Really connect with your body. 
every movement up. All right, so let's reset. Oh, you might want to use your hands under your knees to help bend your knees. Whew, I got a lot of stretch in the hamstrings. All right. You can come back to sitting on your mat the, uh, I guess, the usual way. So you can have your legs extended. If you're pretty tight in the hamstrings, especially you got quite a bit of a hamstring stretch just in our last two poses, you might want to bend your knees quite a bit. So with, with your legs either extended or bent, Begin once again to sit up taller in your spine, even lift out of your hips. And then with this lifted spine, start to imagine tilting at the hips, tilting, tilting, tilting. And then if you, once you can't go any further, now start to walk your upper body and then let your spine round. So in this pose, really let your ankles, your legs even flop out to the side. I find if you shine your palms to the ceiling, that can relax your shoulders a bit more. So part of this practice is also becoming less reactive. Um, so it might sound like torture, um, but when, I, when I've been guiding meditation, um, I try to encourage you to sit still as you're practicing or when you're practicing in yoga, as you, once you found your Goldilocks position, try to remain still because it's really when you're sitting in stillness, you can begin hearing how reactive your mind is and you could be, you can begin hearing those thoughts or those reactive like images that makes you kind of move and shift and itch. So initially it might be pretty hard for you to, in some ways to sit with the discomforts and the itch, uh, but as your practice becomes stronger, you become less reactive and um, you can become essentially more calm uh, regardless of what's kind of going on outside. So that's why um, in meditation and in yin yoga, we encourage you to be with the stillness because uh, you can appreciate that even though we're sitting in stillness, uh, our body's in stillness, uh, the mind can be pretty chaotic. So it's not that, you know, by us practicing meditation or, you know, practicing these yoga poses, it makes our mind chaotic. But it's because maybe for the first time in your normal day, you're sitting here and you're directly observing the mind. So it's not that your mind gets crazier and wilder when you're sitting in meditation or practicing yoga, but it's because only in meditation and in yoga, you get to see your mind so clearly. And reality is you and I, we have a crazy chaotic mind. And that's okay. It's not to judge ourselves, you know. But it's for us to find and create the inner space to clear the dense forest of our head, of our mind. So we have a place to just be, to breathe. We're approaching our last minute. 
So just notice any tension creep up in the forehead, the temples, the jaw, the neck, the tongue. Relax. Can you relax any deeper in the lower spine, in the glutes, hamstrings, calves, ankles, feet, toes, relax. In your breath, are you holding any tension in your belly? Is the breath constricted? See if you can relax and breathe a little bit deeper. Even sigh if you need to, that can help release any tension of the breath. You may have to sigh a lot. Maybe you'll have to be sighing the rest of practice for you to really let go of some tension. And I'm pretty sure you're all muted, so feel free to make any noises, maybe screams. Okay, <laughs> so pressing into the hands, slowly, the slowest that you've risen, all practice. Holy sensations. Oh, okay. Oh, that was like much needed, but at the same time, oh my. Oh, that's my spine. Oh, and my lower spine, my glutes. Oh. Okay, I think a twist would feel pretty nice right now. So let's do some shoelaces. So I'll instruct you with half shoelace and then I'll instruct you full shoelace. So with half shoelace, um, extend out the right leg and then wrap your left leg over top bringing bringing your left your left heel towards the right outer thigh so this is the leg positioning for half shoelace so full shoelace all it is is you're, you're just going to bring your bottom leg and do the same thing so uh, first flex your ankles to protect your knee uh, you might have to lean into your right your right hand and then bring your right heel towards your left outer thigh. So you can use your hands to maybe close up any gaps to tighten your, your hip stretch. So right here, you, you, you should probably feel a little bit of stretch in both outside of your IT band. Um, so there's some options for you. Um, so I'm, how about this? I'm gonna set a timer for, four, five, for five minutes. Um, you can either forward fold, that's one option. You can twist. And you can also do side stretch. So I'll give you a five minute window to play around. Uh, to be honest, you can do all three if you want. You can do one, uh, you can do two. I'll let you know when we're halfway through. So you can also switch at the halfway mark. So five minutes on the clock, enjoy. I think a lot of us are pretty tight in our IT bands. So this is a great leg position to constantly be stretching into your outer hips. So, the rain tool that I was supposed to teach us. <laughs> so, uh, rain, um, it's taught to me by Tara Brock. Um, she was a meditation teacher, a therapist. Uh, this is from her book called Radical Compassion that I've been reading. 
So RAIN is an acronym. You can use it kind of as a reflection, as a meditation. Um, so the R stands for recognize. So you can use this tool, especially if you're feeling overwhelmed, but you can use it just to constantly to build up your emotional resilience and just for you to deepen your presence and to deepen your loving kindness. So first, just to recognize, like, you know, what is going on in the body, recognize what are the emotions that you're currently feeling, recognize like where in the body you might be holding tension and begin recognizing maybe what are some of the thoughts, the storylines that it's going on. So that's R. So once you kind of recognize kind of what's going on in the inside world, in your mind, in your body, with your breath, then allow. Can you just start to let it be? Because a lot of times that we just allow these slots, these emotions to come and go, they'll be gone, like within 90 seconds even, uh, for emotions, if we don't disturb them, if we don't add to them, if we don't judge them. So can we let it be? So at the A step, sometimes just saying yes inside, like saying yes to yourself, um, maybe a mantra, like let it be, or I'm okay with this, I can be here with this, or just saying yes, like just saying yes to this experience right now. So that's A. So I is investigate. Because a lot of times our thoughts, like the thoughts are real because we have them, but the meanings, like what the thoughts are telling us, it's not real, it's fake, it's false. So as we investigate, you can ask things like, you know, is this thought true? Is this thought really true? Can I be completely sure this is what's going on? Or it could be like, I feel, you know, I feel worried about this presentation. What am I really worried about? Like, what's the worst case scenario? Like, have I experienced this kind of worry before? Where is this coming from? So this, this step, it's more of a curious investigating. And it's more of an investigating by being present as opposed to thinking and, and brainstorming. And then lastly, the N is nurture. So nurture, you can use the loving kindness meditation that we did, bring to mind a loved one, say things to yourself that you always wanted to hear, positive affirmations. Oh crap, I forgot to signal halfway. Um, so we're pretty much at the end of the five minutes actually. <laughs> So pressing into your hands, slowly come out of your pose. Wow, time goes by fast. Um, so you can do any countering. Windshield wiper might feel good. <laughs> I'll let us know two and a half minutes in into the other side. All right, so when you're ready, we'll extend out the left leg, wrap the right leg around over top, drawing the right heel towards the left outer thigh. So this is half shoelace, you might wanna stay here. Full shoelace, once again, flex your ankle. Whenever you flex your ankle with your toes pointed towards your face, you uh, protect the knee joint. So now I'll just wrap the bottom leg, left heel to right outer thigh. So this is shoelace. So I'm gonna set five minutes. You can fold forward, you can twist to the right, you can do a side stretch. And I'll let us know. If anything, I'll set my timer to halfway. Okay. Okay, I'll let us know when we're halfway. Um, so the rain tool. So once you made it through RAI, nurture, send in love, direct some positive affirmations. Um, if you have an inner child practice, you could kind of speak with your inner child or speak to the place which feels hurt. So maybe you started to use this rain tool because you're feeling anxious, you're feeling doubtful about yourself, you were feeling like, you know, lack of confidence. So maybe you practice this rain tool touching into the anxious part of you, maybe to the fearful part of you. So as you get to the end, the nurture, you can direct it, for instance, it could be like, you know, 
dear loved one or dear sweetheart or dear child, like, you know, I love you. It's okay. We've been through this so many times before. We'll make it through the, together. You have my support a hundred percent. So that could be something you could um, nurture. So after you went through R-A-I-N, uh, the tool's not over yet. Um, so lastly, if anything, it might be the most important step. It's called after the rain. So once you kind of were able to sit with, recognize, be with, investigate, to nurture the wounded part of you, now just notice and enjoy the sense of being any shifts that might have occurred after going through the rain tool. Or maybe as you experience after the rain, you might be connecting with deeper parts of yourself that you've lost touch with. So after the rain, at least spend you know a minute or two, give it a couple of moments to embrace the aftermath of using the rain tool. In some ways, uh, yin yoga is kind of giving yourself a self massage. Uh, we're just kind of using gravity to really stretch, stretch our muscles. Okay, so we're at the halfway mark. So if you want to, you can change your pose or you can just continue to stay in your current pose. So it's pretty cool because when you are able to hold a pose, because my teacher even says you can hold poses upwards to 10 minutes. So it's really cool to see as you hold for like hold still and disengage your muscles um, in this practice. It's truly less is more. Um, you can sometimes feel as the deeper fascia like starts to almost get unstuck or start to um, disengage and to stretch. And you can really feel that when you start to embrace and get familiar with the silence, you start to appreciate the nuances, the small movements, the small things. And uh, even though you're holding still, your eyes are closed, you might be tapping into a pretty wondrous imaginative world. Okay, slowly just make your way back up to sitting. You can uncross your legs. One last round of windshield wiper, tabletop, slide, whatever you need. My nose is plugged. I think it's dusty in this back room. Okay, so we'll move our way up to our belly. We'll be kind of laying vertical, horizontal for the rest of practice. So maybe any sips of water. It just gets a bit awkward to drink water after going down now. So we're just gonna move into a sphinx pose. If 
you have any pillows, I find a pillow under the chest is nice, or a pillow to support the forehead. So this is Sphinx pose, it's a back bend. You can, there's a lot of variations in Sphinx. So if you have your elbows closer to your body, it's a deeper back bend. If you widen the angles of your legs, it's a deeper back bend. If you bend your knees, it's a deeper back bend as well. So we're gonna be here for five minutes. And in terms of your head, you can either tilt your head back, stretching the throat, or dropping your head, stretching the back of the neck. If you need to, you can always take a little break and you can just come down on your chest and you can turn your head one way. Even as you're laying flat on your chest, um, it's still a subtle back bend. Um, so, you, so if you want to be real, like have a really lazy, a lazy a yoga, a yoga practice, uh, just lay down your yoga mat and um, lie down on your chest and just turn your head to one side. Um, that's a great way to lengthen the, the lower spine and to reverse, to reverse all the sitting that we do. Like I, I work at home, I sit on my computer, I drive quite a bit. So the great pose to uh, watch TV, watch Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus on your laptop. Um, even just like jumping on your bed, like when I'm making TikTok videos or any social media content, uh, I go on my bed on my phone and I'm just kind of on my phone like this. Yeah, it's a great alternative. It's a great uh, supplement to all the sitting that we do. We're at the halfway mark. So remember, it shouldn't be torture. If any time, maybe you just need a little break. Let yourself, let yourself come down. If anything, if it's hard for you to not push yourself all the time, if it's hard for you to sometimes, you know, do a little bit less than more, maybe I encourage you to come down. Um, because that could be also part of your yoga practice, <laughs> to do less. I can tell I'm going to have the best sleep tonight. This is an option. We're at our last minute. If you want a deeper variation, you can move into a seal pose. So just bring your legs down and just plant into your hands and extend into your elbows. 
you might need to walk your hands closer. So this is pretty much the deepest back bend you can go laying, laying on our front side like this. So we won't be here for long if you are in steel pose. And if you're lying on your chest, we will all be needing you really soon. So enjoy. All right, everybody, slowly make your way down to your chest, stack your hands, and let's turn our heads towards the right. Just landing, landing your left cheek onto the back of your hands. So this should feel pretty good. So now you can draw your right knee towards your right elbow. You might have to scoot onto your mat. It might feel better to have your right knee on the mat. I don't know if you can see me. It's probably pretty hard. But I think I got it. Before we fall asleep, we'll slip sides. I can totally fall asleep like this. To be honest, this is kind of how I sleep. I'm like a belly sleeper. I've been trying to transition to a side sleeper, um, but I'm usually, yeah, like a, a belly Superman sleeper. Okay, let's see. We can bring the leg back down. We'll roll onto our backs. Make your way to your back as we're rounding down the practice. Oh yeah, I think some of you weren't in here earlier. Um, but for the end of tonight's event, I'm gonna end it with you all laying on your backs in Shavasana. So as I end the event you can maybe have a nap you can spend some more time laying on the ground maybe you want to practice some more so you have options to do what you want uh, but yeah the, the event will end with us well with you lying in shavasana okay so let's scoot to the right side of our yoga mat so scoot all the way to the right edge we're going to move into banana asana so come to the right edge of the yoga mat. Zip up your legs, bring your legs together, and just bring your arms overhead, clasping opposite elbows. So from here, keeping, keeping your hips planted to the ground, start to wiggle your legs out to the left side, forming a C-shape. So once you start to feel a stretch in your right side body, likely your right hip, start to walk your upper body. So start to wiggle your upper body towards the left, forming a C-shape. So this is banana asana. You can cross your right ankle over your left ankle to anchor and deepen the stretch. Or you could try crossing your left over right. Might be a personal preference. And in this pose, you can even turn your head to the left to get a neck stretch too. This is one of my favorite poses. It just feels so good to stretch the side body. And I love being lazy. 
Uh, this is just like a great way for me to use like the, the body, the use gravity and to use um, crossing of the angles. So yeah, let's treat ourselves to a nice long banana asana tonight. So we're gonna have a juicy four minutes on each side. So this is an easy pose for you to get deeper or for you to back out. And this is also a great pose for you to practice taking deeper inhales and exhales because you can really feel all the breathing muscles that's involved. And we don't think about it, but you can actually train your breathing muscles to be stronger and to have and take deeper and slower breaths. So you can really feel the little muscles between each rib as you take deeper breaths in. It's almost like you're a hot air balloon Stretching, stretching. We're at the halfway mark. So just checking in <laughs> with your body in this banana shape. Is it pretty happy with the way the banana looks right now, the way it feels? Or is the body opening up and it's inviting you to go a bit deeper? Or maybe it's like, this is too much, too much bananas. So you might want to straighten up a little bit. Uncross the ankles if they're crossed. And just make your way to the other side, however you move. Just do it your way. So wiggle your body to the left edge of the mat. And then just make your way into banana asana on this side. And remember, one side might look and feel different than the other side. So just meet it where it's at.
So as we're winding down, just checking in, checking in with the quality of your mind. Is it calmer, more quiet, more peaceful, more gentle? Maybe it's you know still a bit chaotic, which is okay. Maybe it's loud and noisy and turbulent, irritated, frustrated, confused, numb. Just notice that. And can you allow these thoughts, these emotions to just be here without trying to push it away, without trying to keep them, without trying to judge them? Can we just allow it to be here? And even in, even just checking in, what are the thoughts that you're currently having? What's the current emotion, the current sensation in the body? Where is it really coming from? Why is it here right now? And can we be with ourselves? Oops. Lovingly, kindly. If we're going to be with ourselves for the rest of our life, if we're going to be the only person that's going to be there for sure at our last breath, wouldn't it be awesome that every moment it's loving, it's kind? So as we are winding down this practice, tap back into your heart space. Bring back the loving presence of your loved one. Anchor, make this your new home. Choose Choose love. It's so easy. We're, we're kind of wired. We kind of have the chip stacked against us. We're pretty sensitive when it comes to negativity and fear. They were those ancestors that had a little fear mechanism. They were the ones that kind of survived hundreds of thousands of years ago. One of our real threats when they were truly like saber-toothed tigers and dinosaurs and spiders the size of my head. Like they truly, like their fear mechanism kept them alive. They kept, they kept them alive. Uh, whereas now we live in the safest time in human history, we still have that sensitive fear response in our brain, thanks to our ancestors. Luckily, we evolved new parts of the brain that we can train for mindfulness, for love, for gratitude, for kindness. And this part of our brain can become stronger than our fear responses, than our unhealthy habits with chasing worrying thoughts, even getting addicted to depressive and worrying emotions. Uncross the ankles, wiggle yourself back to center. So once you're back to center, we're just gonna land here. If you find there's any discomfort in the lower back, just bend your knees and plant your feet to the, to the mat. This might be a nice way to really lengthen the spine, especially the lower spine and really to let the hips and the lower spine relax. So either if you want the lazy, the really chill version, just have your feet kind of hip width apart and let your knees come in and let your knees uh, press them together. 
Or you can draw your knees to your chest for a more active little spine stretch. So you can, you can roll left and right, you can roll in circles, you can roll alongside to the left side of your spine. This should feel really good. I think of this as a free massage. You can roll on the left side of your spine. You can even get tricky with it and start to roll into the outer edges of your hip, roll around your femur head, roll around the outside of your glutes, your IT band. But you might have to get, yeah, you might have to risk falling over <laughs> to really get to roll into those tight spots. Oh, it feels so good. Oh. Okay, so from here, all you're gonna do is uh, extend out the arms and let your legs fall to the right. So if you have other twists that you know, you could take other twists. You might have to readjust your hips to let your, your legs fall closer to the ground. So this is just a nice way to balance both sides of the body before coming to our final resting pose. You can turn your head towards the left. Planting into the hands, bring your legs back to center, and let your legs fall and twist the other side now. You might need to stack your hips, adjust your hips, and you can turn your head to the right on this side. That was my watch. I love twists. Don't know about you. But um, yeah, it's kind of like my outer hips. My IT band is one of the tightest parts of my body. So twists are a very gentle, passive way to get a nice stretch. Not only the outer hips, but you get a nice stretch in your, in your organs. You get to squeeze and compress your intestines, your stomach, your liver. And then as you untwist, you decompress and allows a rush of new blood into the organs. So plant into your hands, bring your legs back to center. So any last minute movements that you might need, maybe drawing your knees into your chest, any sort of rocking motions. And when you're ready, just get comfortable. You might throw on an extra sweater if you're outside. If you have something to cover your eyes, that might feel nice. And really get nice and big. Even take out, take up some more room than you're used to. Uh, get your shoulder blades tucked in. I like to even, I even like to use my fingertips, my hands to lift up the back of my head, and to give myself a little back massage or a little neck massage, and then letting my head come down and tucking my chin in a little bit. 
Yeah, my neck, my neck is another sore spot. So get nice and comfortable. So really let go of any tension. Just do a quick body scan from head to toe. Scanning across your face. Relaxing the muscles in the eyes, the jaw, peeling your tongue off the roof of your mouth. Separating your lips might really relax around your mouth and your jaw, your neck. Scanning down the upper body, the chest, the upper back, the middle. Scanning across the belly, the lower spine. Can you really relax now? Really let gravity bring you closer to the earth. Now scanning down your hips, your pelvis, your glutes, relax. Now just finish the scan on your own, scanning down both legs. Down all the way to the soles of the feet, all the way down to the toes. And really full body relax. So I do encourage to allow yourself some more time just being by yourself, laying there. And maybe you want to practice the rain tool. Um, if there is one letter you can maybe focus on as you enjoy some more time laying here by yourself, resting, enjoying your own company. I encourage you to focus on the nurture step. Really spend some time in this full moon to love on yourself, to say the words that you want to hear, not only from your partner, but maybe the words that you really wanted to hear from your parents growing up. Maybe it's, uh, you know, dear, like dear little one, like I love you so much. I'm so glad that you're born. You know, I'm so glad you're a girl. I'm so glad that you're a boy. I love how much energy that you have. I love the way that you move. I love the way your voice sounds. I love spending time with you. So take some time to nurture yourself and enjoy the rest of your full moon. Uh, so it is the end of this full moon yin yoga event. I appreciate you all. I uh, hope you enjoy and have a lot of restful moments in the coming weeks. And I'll see you at the next new moon. Namaste. Enjoy everybody. Jazz, Kareem, Cody, Jen. I'll see you real soon.